a U. Come here. Come on, you're missing out. So Thailand represents many different things to different people. You might think of Thailand and you might think of beautiful white sand beaches or you might think of the crazy nightlife, the amazing food and culture that you can absorb. Or maybe it's the bars, clubs and go-go bars. Are you a street food person? Are you a fine dining person? Do you eat Thai food? Do you eat Western food? You can find it all here in Thailand. Some people want to come here and hang out in Bangkok. Others want to go to Pattaya, Chiang Mai, Krabi, Chiang Rai, Phuket, Isan, Wa Hin, Koh Samui, Koh Phangan. Some people want to explore the countryside. Others want to lie on a beach all day. It doesn't matter what you come here for. We all love Thailand. So in today's video, I'm going to give you seven reasons why you should book your next holiday now. So number one is that flights are really cheap right now. So even if you're not planning to come until months down the line, I would still look at booking a flight now and locking in these prices while you can. So for me personally, when I travel, I'd always try and find the cheapest flight possible. One that made sense, you know, I didn't want to have two or three stops or anything like that. But a great website that I use for that is kiwi.com. So I really recommend, I'm not affiliated with that website or anything. It's just what I always used in the past to travel. It's really great for searching. And even if you're not sure where you want to go, you can actually search by price throughout the country so I'll leave a link for them below so you can check them out but a really great feature that I'll use on there when I was planning to book flights is you can look up by destination and then open a calendar and it shows you the prices for each date so you can actually find the cheapest date on whatever day of the month it is so another great hack you can do after that is to go on the website of the airline that you found the cheapest flights with and see if they have a cheaper price from their home website sometimes they do sometimes Kiwi is the cheaper option it just depends so another great thing you can do on that website is look at it from a global point of view and see how much flights cost from your home country to anywhere so that was the way I found out it was cheaper for me to fly when I was living in Korea to fly from Korea to the Philippines and then to Australia than to fly straight to Australia so instead every time I'd go back and forth between Australia I'd take a quick stop in the Philippines let's say for a week or something and have a quick holiday and the price was significantly cheaper than the flight to Australia so the money that you would save on that flight you could actually spend on the holiday so get on it book those flights because the way airlines work is that as soon as the demand goes up the prices shoot up as well So number two, and this is for you Pattaya lovers out there, and I know there's a lot of you, that's why this gets its own category. So Pattaya is opening, finally. So it was announced a couple of weeks ago that restaurants were able to serve alcohol, and any bar that trades as a restaurant or has a restaurant license can also serve alcohol. So what that actually means is not what you would first think. So you would think you have to be sitting in a restaurant eating your dinner or something like that and you can have a beer with it. But that's not the case. Any bar that has a restaurant license can trade as a restaurant. Now those licenses are not too difficult to come by and so many bars have them already. There's a lot of places you would not expect to be trading as restaurants that are now trading as restaurant restaurants. But a lot of the bars that you would go to Pattaya for are open. And all those girls, they haven't vanished off the face of the earth. They're still in Pattaya. So a lot of these places that are restaurants, you probably wouldn't want to eat in anyway. To give you an example, a lot of those places on Soy 6 have just started to open just from yesterday. So there's places everywhere starting to get their license and they're able to open and trade as restaurants. Now Walking Street hasn't opened, the nightclubs are not able to open yet, but I imagine that's going to happen quite soon. This is just the first step of everything reopening basically. So you can see already since that change, the Pattaya's gotten busier. It gets busier every time I go there. I go there sort of every week or every two weeks and every time I go there it's significantly busier. The last time I was there I hung out at a bar, listened to live music, I didn't eat, just drank, had a really good time. And there was people everywhere there was a really good vibe so while Pattaya is not what it used to be and it's probably not how you remember it you can still definitely have a good time there you know with places reopening this is the beginning and this is the building process from here so by the time you come it's gonna be even better again So 
Number three is that Bangkok is really open now. So much like Pattaya, the official statement is the bars that trade as restaurants are allowed to be open and serving alcohol. So much like Pattaya, those licenses are really easy to come by. The only difference is Bangkok's been open a lot longer and there's a lot more people here. So there's a lot more places open and there's a lot more people out and about. There's a lot of misconceptions going around at the moment as to what exactly constitutes as a bar that can trade as a restaurant. And I hear all these different things, especially I read them in the comments from people saying you can't go into places or you need to buy food or whatever, but that's actually not the case. So you don't need to buy food in these places. You can literally just walk in and only have a drink. That's fine. Basically the venue just needs to have a license that says it's able to serve food as a restaurant. People also say, you know, the go-go bars and everything haven't opened yet, and that's not entirely true. So there's definitely, there's main strips that haven't reopened yet, but there's plenty that have. They've just changed the approach to how they're serving people. But let's just say, I've been into some restaurants that have a lot of waitresses and I wasn't offered any food. <laughs> A lot of the opinions and statements that I see from people, not just on YouTube, but also on like Facebook groups and stuff like that, are from people that aren't actually even here. So there's a real disconnect between what's actually happening and what people think is happening. And it's difficult for us, as a YouTuber, it's difficult for us to talk about what's really happening here for some of the things. It's not in our best interest to talk about places that are blatantly breaking the law and breaking the rules, even though places are, but we can't really advertise that. So bars were closed for the longest time. Only they weren't. I've known places that have been open the entire time I've been here. I've just tried to be subtle about the way I tell it, but not everyone was able to pick up on what I was saying. So I guess the question, what everyone wants to know is like, are there still any bars open? Can you get a drink? And look, like the answer, this is Thailand, right? You gotta read between the lines of what I'm saying here. So bars are not open officially and you can't go and buy alcohol, but bars are still open, trading as restaurants, and you can still definitely go in there and have a great time. So that's another one of those things that's only gonna get better. I've seen places get busier week on week on week and that's only gonna continue from here on out. So come on, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Then you've got this, the food. The food honestly is reason enough to want to come to Thailand on its own. The food here is all so good. This is a little noodle dish that I got just from a little street food place, 40 baht. So it's unbelievably cheap. This is healthy, it's good for you, it's delicious. I'm sure it's delicious, I haven't had it yet but it's delicious. So the great thing about Thailand is even if you don't eat Thai food all the time, there's great international food here and it's all relatively cheap, you know, because everything's so much cheaper here. I know for me living in Australia as an example, to go and eat out in Australia is so much more expensive than you'll pay for anything here. You know, these street food places are great. There's also very nice, really high-end restaurants all around here. Lots of international foods, you know, Korean food's popular here, Japanese food's popular here. Everything, you know, you can even get really good pizzas and Italian food here. There's just so much variety. And honestly, some of the best food you will find are in these little places. I'm just sitting, sitting in the street under an umbrella. The guy cooked this in a little cart. Looks amazing. I'll try it, I'll tell you. So it looks and smells amazing, and I'm sure it is. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, you're missing out. And number five is the prices are climbing on everything. I was staying just over, only a month ago, I was staying in Airbnbs for like $10 or $11 a night. It was unbelievably cheap and they're gone now, they're out. So when I was staying there, they started like $10, $11. Then it was one week later, I was paying like $15. And then it went up to 20 and then $25. So that's why I stopped staying in Airbnbs and locked in a contract on my apartment for the next year while I got that at a really good price. But I can see even just walking around the street day to day, there's more tourists, there's more people arriving. I'm meeting people every day that have just arrived or they're only just recently come. So there's definitely more and more people coming. So that's driving those prices right up. Me personally, I like to stay in Airbnbs, especially if you're staying for a decent amount of time. It's just sort of, it's more like an apartment style and it feels more like home for when you're there. So it's a good way to have a home base set up. Otherwise, if you're just doing short little trips or you want to stay somewhere like really luxury or something like that, hotels are definitely the way to go. So I use booking.com or a go to book my hotels or Airbnb to book apartments. 
Over the last six months, I've stayed in some absolutely incredible hotels. Ones on Samui that open up onto the beach. I stayed in the mountains in Krabi with just this incredible view. There's so many great places and I got them for such good prices, but they're gonna go up, so book that as soon as possible. Number six is this. Tourist attractions, temples, beaches. There's no one here, you can have the places to yourself. It's amazing. You know, over the last six months, I've been to places like Koh Lan, which I thought was this like beautiful island. And when I look at videos of what it used to be like, I'd never been there before. And when I look at what it used to be like, it was packed full of people, there was litter everywhere. It was just a completely different experience to what I experienced. When I went there, it was just this tropical paradise. I was one of the only people on the beach. I could just lie there and relax. But it looks very different. I also went to Koh Phangan where the full moon party is. That was a very different experience. I've been to the full moon parties at Koh Phangan and I've seen it at its craziest. And I went there and I was like one of the only people on the beach. Granted the day I was there the weather wasn't that good. But it was still a very strange experience to see the difference. But that being said it's nice to go to these places and not have crowds of people everywhere. You know a lot of the time you want to take photos in front of things or photos with things. And there's just a crowd of people around and you don't get the photo that you want. Whereas now there's a lot less people around and you can do that. So to add on to that, a lot of these touristy destinations are really overpriced and that's the reason that you would avoid them in the past. But a lot of them actually have great discounts on at the moment too, which is awesome. So Thailand has some of the most beautiful parks, gardens, national parks, temples in the whole world. And a lot of them, when you come here in the past, you have to pay a tourist price. You know, they've got a Thai price and a tourist price. At the moment, a surprising amount of them are just offering the Thai price, just a flat price for everyone. Not everywhere, it's just sort of hit and miss with which places are doing it. But it is a really nice thing anyway. And then number seven is to beat the rush. So you can probably see the traffic behind me here. Bangkok's traffic has been getting progressively worse over the last few months. As COVID is not so much of a thing anymore and people aren't as stressed to go out anymore. There's definitely been a real change in how many people are out and about that you see every single day. So the traffic's gotten worse, there's more people out and about. It's only gonna get worse too, so come over quickly. So at the moment, there's a really good balance of how many people are here. So there's enough people here that you can still definitely have a good time and you know the bars are full and there's people out and about everywhere. But it's still also not so busy that you don't struggle to get a taxi. And you can get on the train and it'll be squished in like sardines. It's just a really good amount of people here right now. Over the last few weeks, I've met so many people that have just arrived. You know, people have started coming here, travel's resuming. That alone is exciting as the travel's resuming. But just so many more people have come here just recently. So it's really interesting to see firsthand just how much tourism has picked up. And this is another one of those things that's changing week to week to week. So two weeks ago, I was in Pattaya and I went into a Kiss restaurant that I go to frequently for lunch. And I could just walk in and sit anywhere I wanted. I went back there just a few days ago and I couldn't get a table in there in the middle of the day. I was blown away at just how much it had increased over two weeks. Same goes with all the night markets and everything like that. You know, you used to be able to just walk in and sit down everywhere, but it's getting busier and you have to wait. It's harder to find taxis, it's harder to get around. So it's definitely worth coming sooner than later. There's a lot of misinformation out here that I see in YouTube comments and on Facebook and things like that. So it's always good to hear from someone who's actually here because a lot of the people that leave those comments, they're not even here at all. And for me personally, before I came here, I would always look to my favorite YouTubers to get the latest information and what's happening in places. It's just, it's a bit more fun than like watching through the news or reading articles and stuff like that too. You know, I'm not just trying to overhype this. Thailand really is coming alive again. You know, the COVID numbers are way down. The vaccine numbers, they're, they're well over, I think they're just over a hundred million now, which is awesome. So it's not even something that people think about that much anymore. So all the local Thai people are coming out and that's why you're seeing that it's so much busier everywhere now. And there's a real positivity in the air because of that, you know, people are coming here on holidays it's just it's becoming really exciting here all right we're going to wrap the video up here get your ass over here i hope this was informative and gets you hyped up to come so anyway as always thanks for watching see you next time